Before the railways made transportation of materials easier, houses were built from local materials. The walls were of clay or local stone. The roofing timbers were dug from the bogs. The roof was made by local craftsmen using straw or reeds gathered locally. Thatching is still carried out in some areas, particularly County Wexford and Adair in County Limerick. These pictures were taken at the Bonratty Folk Park where thatch is being repaired. We're now looking down from the top of the roof. The bent sticks used to keep the thatch in place are called scallops. The houses our families lived in varied enormously. At one extreme were the mansions of the great gentry. At the other, this cabin of the 1860s, a crude framework of branches resting on a bank and covered with scrawls. By the 19th century, almost all Irish houses had chimneys, but there were some houses like this cabin with the smoke escaping by the door. Many families, especially in the western half of the country, lived in one-roomed cottages. In the poor families, especially along the western seaboard, cows and pigs occasionally shared the room with the family. It would be a mistake to think that all the people lived in one-roomed cabins. In the Midlands and indeed in parts of the West, there were many comfortable farmers who lived in comfortable houses like these surrounded by outhouses for the livestock. There were also slated houses in the countryside. They had come to Ireland after the Ulster plantation and were quite common in the eastern part of the country. But thatched houses were common in the town as well as in the countryside. In a poor town like Kilmallock, many of the houses were thatched or there were whole districts of thatched houses like the Clada in Galway. Today, Adair in County Limerick gives us an idea of what a prosperous village would have looked like. But what are the houses like inside? Let's take a look. Be on a kistenach cri on chowlik, a gusan thina a chiat lar. Banav nak mirk niart mon ar fall. Kigilti on thina saniha, a gus da ditig a rish or madani. Or on mak a hi kyaun an ti. Deda kon krok a yasu leshen gorkon hesku. Under a shore, when a plati armid, a juggan a lonriha. Agus a vowly porcelain le haig ol te. An liaba siakam. An torlar liakak no gan liakar be. Nor a tog ti chak viuk dausaku. Agus pram salti or an talav gamiakshena orlar min re. Agason inyog biog freshen. Via corner vinyoga santianam, agas vi glinia gong idu sanked, on lach doris, a honig bonita on tolish, a hulatu on la hockel, na dorki gan dorisurum, on lach doris, on postus jig agas na kyarka amui, agas bawahan take, agas tu ig bula blade er on gorsa. An akin a christiani ta on maestra a yenov. The cream has been kept in the wooden crock. Now Mrs. Crowley is pouring it into the churn. This one is called a dash churn because the plunger on the end of the handle is dashed up and down. The action causes the fat to separate from the buttermilk. The actual churning takes about 20 minutes. Well, we needn't show you all this. The butter floats on the top of the buttermilk and is scooped out in a saucer. 
Water is poured into the wooden crock and the remaining milk is washed out of the butter. These are called butter spades. Now the butter is being salted. The buttermilk which remained in the churn is used for baking. And here is the product, one of the seven pounds of butter which have just been made. 